The best feature, in my opinion, of the Copa Libertadores is the unpredictability. San Lorenzo were actually the first Argentine team to play in the Copa Libertadores back in 1960. But the story of their 2014 Copa Libertadores run shows how variable the competition is. Any team can win any game at any time. Club Atletico San Lorenzo de Almagro, or San Lorenzo for short, are from Buenos Aires, and while they are one of the biggest teams in that city and in Argentina, they are not as widely recognized throughout the world as teams like River Plate or Boca Juniors. Still, they've got a large fan base, and when they won the league title in 2013, they were granted entry to the 2014 Copa Libertadores. Pope Francis himself hosted the team in the Vatican that year, and even lifted the Argentine League trophy in St. Peter's Square. The Pope reminisced with the team about his days as a young boy, going with his own father to watch San Lorenzo matches. But for nearly 100 years, the club had been unable to gain top-tier international victories. In the 2014 Copa Libertadores, this would change. During the group stages, San Lorenzo lost their first match 2-0 to Brazilian side Botafogo, then beat Ecuadorians Independiente del Valle at home with a great goal by current Atletico Madrid forward Angel Correa. But the run of matches was not in their favour until their final game played at their home stadium, El Nuevo Gasol Metro, where they faced Botafogo again. Here, they won 3-0. San Lorenzo squeaked through to the knockout stages, with a plus one goal difference separating them from Independiente del Valle, who finished third in the group. Brazilian side Grêmio came out of their group strongly. They were undefeated and seeded as the second best team in the round of 16. San Lorenzo were seeded as the second worst team, entering into the knockout rounds only ahead of Club Nacional from Paraguay, who were ranked lowest. In the first game of the round of 16, San Lorenzo were pitted against Gremio. The game was at home in Argentina. Angel Correa again showed his importance to the team, as he scored the only goal of the night in the early stages of the second half. In Brazil, however, the tables were turned when Dudu scored for Grêmio at the 83rd minute, leaving the match to be decided by penalties. Thanks to a great performance by Sebastian Tarico, San Lorenzo's keeper, the Argentine side were through to the quarterfinals. There, they faced another big Brazilian squad, Cruzeiro. With a win against Cruzeiro in the first match and a draw in the second, San Lorenzo were, for the first time in a generation, through to the semi-finals of the Copa Conmebol Libertadores. For the semis, San Lorenzo were pitted against Bolivar, one of the best Bolivian football clubs hailing from La Paz. It was important for San Lorenzo to press their advantage in the home game. Bolivar, on the other hand, wanted to hold back, to defend and wait until the second game when they could use their home ground's high altitude to their advantage. But San Lorenzo scored first, with Mauro Matos heading in a free kick from Leandro Romagnoli at just five minutes in. A 
another Romagnoli assist led to Emmanuel Mas scoring a second goal. The score? 2-0 for the Argentinians at half-time. The Bolivians came out more offensively in the second half. But San Lorenzo took advantage and put in another three goals. The final score, 5-0 in their favour. The fans hoped and prayed this was their chance to see their first Copa Libertadores final. The second game was played at the Estadio Hernando Siles, one of the highest in the world at 3,600 metres above sea level, where the home team has a huge advantage. They are acclimatised to the lack of oxygen in the air at such heights. Could Bolivar reverse the situation? Could they put away five goals? The Bolivians emerged on the attack, but risked counter-attack. After intense back and forth, the score stayed at nil all as the half-time whistle blew. In the second half, the climate started to affect San Lorenzo's players and Bolivar took shot after shot. They were closing in. They did score, but only a single goal and late in the game at the 89th minute. The aggregate result saw the Argentine side head to their first ever Copa Libertadores final. But who were they going to play? Remarkably, it was the modest side the team which had been seeded last in the knockout stages, the almost unknown Paraguayan team, Club Nacional. Here again we had a situation where the two lowest ranked knockout stage clubs were pitted against each other in the finals. So different from the UEFA Champions League, where the top ranked sides routinely dispatch their foes and ascend to the highest echelons of the tournament. The first game was played in Paraguay. The game started in an edgy, hesitant way. But 19 minutes into the second half, Mauro Matos swept in a great cross to score the first goal of the match. The Paraguayans pinched one back at the very end of the game, but the one all result was a good setup for San Lorenzo. They had an away goal and a home game in hand. The second game of the Copa Libertadores final was played at El Nuevo Gueso Metro, San Lorenzo's home stadium. This was the most important day in San Lorenzo's history. The home team fans were in fantastic form. San Lorenzo put their fate and their history into the hands of the players as the referee blew his whistle to start the match. Nacional, the Paraguayans, emerged strongly and attacked the Argentine goal with a series of shots and rebounds. But at the 36th minute, a blatant handball in the box gave a penalty to the home side. Nesto Ortigosa took the kick and scored. The Argentine side dominated the rest of the match, both in form and in morale. And at the 95th minute, the referee ended the match. Exaltation. San Lorenzo won their first Copa Libertadores title. 
a remarkable victory for a side which had seen so few titles of such immensity in their history. Euphoria was unleashed. And while the Paraguayan side, Nacional, came off second best, the 2014 Copa Libertadores was an embodiment of the type of football and the type of results only seen in that competition. In what other football tournament could two sides, like Club Nacional and San Lorenzo, defy the odds to face each other in the finals? It gave football fans everywhere a chance to continue watching the tournament to see creative, unique and intensely engaging football. And that trend continues to this day in the Copa Conmebol Libertadores.